Good Monday morning. Today we are exploring error handling. I'm going to be talking about how you shouldn't swallow errors by doing crash reporting inside on functions. Instead, we're going to look at how you can let errors propagate up to the interface by using promises. I am MGJ, and you are watching Fun Fun Function. When I first started using promises, I tended to write things that looked a little bit like this. Okay, so what does this code do and what are problems with it? I will tell you, but if you want, you can pause the video now and think a little bit about it on your own first. Okay, so let's walk through what delete cat does. So it calls a uh, delete method here on the database object that we get from somewhere. This is fictional code, deal with it. As we see here, uh, delete seems to be returning a promise. Using the promise here, uh, the code is going to log to the console uh, whether or not the cat deletion succeeded. What the code does here is crash reporting. What I mean by that is that it will inform testers and developers that something has gone wrong. But do you know who will not be notified? The user! Let me edit this code so that I fit properly on screen here. Let me move the code down a bit too. The problem with this code is that if something goes wrong here, the user will not actually be notified that the cat deletion failed. If the delete cat operation fails, uh, there is really no nice and graceful way to the so for the software to, to handle that error. The only thing I can think of is to have some kind of weird mechanic where the delete operations are automatically retried or something, mm, but that seems really weird. So. The more realistic thing here is that we need some way for uh, this code, delete cat, to notify it, the higher level code, the, the code that is calling delete cat, that the operation has failed. And this is something that promises solve for you very easily. By the way, if promises are completely new to you, you might want to check out my video on promises here. A link to that is also in the episode description. Back in the day, when I was writing code like this, I was missing out on one of the most useful aspects of promises. In this code here, I am basically just using promises as glorified callbacks. In this code, I'm not making use of the fantastic capability of promises that is that they can be returned and passed around. Let's pause for a bit and think about the concept of a promise. Not the JavaScript concept, but the, the real-life concept of a promise. A real-life example, uh, I recently bought an apartment. When you do that, at least here in Sweden, you go to the bank and you get something called a loan promise. Loan promise is actually its real name if you do a direct translation from Swedish. Basically, you show up at the bank, uh, you uh, show them and prove to them how much you earn, that you a credit check, uh, you tell them what kind of uh, apartment you are shopping for, in what area, what price range, and the bank provides you with a loan promise. They promise you that given these conditions, they will lend you this amount of money. You don't actually have the money, you don't actually have a loan, but you have the promise of a loan. Holding that promise, you can kind of start acting like you actually had the loan. You can go and bid on apartments with this thing, this promise. Promises in JavaScript work sort of the same way. But before I talk about that, I would like to address the fact that this Friday, the Patreon for Fun Fun Function launched. And as of recording, we have over 800 patrons. Ah, that's insane. 
I expected it to take months to reach this level, and we did it in 48 hours. We are now in the top 20 in the education category on Patreon. This Friday was so intense. Uh, it was one of the best days in my life in a very long time. So if you are a patron, thank you so much. If you are not a patron and you are curious about the what and the why of becoming a patron for Fun Fun Function, you can go to patreon.com slash fun fun function or just click here. Where was I? Yo, yeah. Promises in JavaScript, they work sort of like my real life loan promise. When we call database uh, database.delete here in this code, it returns the, the promise of a delete operation. So it doesn't return a success or a failure, it returns the promise of success. If you're one of the courageous few that has uh, watched my video on monads, uh, you know that promises are monads. You really don't have to watch that video or know about monads in order to understand this, but uh, this is, happens to be a very good example of what monads conceptually are. So promise is not uh, the success itself. It's, the promise is actually more like an abstract concept that allows us to act as if uh, we had success. It's similar to how I could use my loan promise to buy an apartment. I could go to people and say, given that my loan promise resolves to an actual loan, I will buy this apartment. And they would say, why are you speaking like a robot? But this video is not about success, it is about failure. Promises do not always resolve to success, they sometimes are rejected with an error. Perhaps my bank is... Uh, big on semicolons and they watch my YouTube channel and they go like, screw you, you standard JS hippie. It's not very likely, but it could happen. And this is why promises in JavaScript can be rejected. And that is very, very useful, but only if you actually return promises and let them roam free instead of trapping them inside your functions like I've done here. Look now, what happens if I uh, remove the handlers yeah, deleted, and I return the promise. I, I let that get out of the function. And let's imagine that we have a click handler that calls it. Alright, so check out this delete button click handler that I just invented. Oh wait, we need an event there as well. So it grabs the cat ID here from the uh, fake element, the fictitious DOM element here. And what it then does is that it calls delete cat, it gets the promise because we are now getting the promise here. And here it will uh, handle the success and remove the item element from the page using the cat ID. And if we get an error, it's going to catch that and it's going to show a message 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 dialog uh, where it says that item uh, item this cat here fluffykins probably was uh, was not deleted notice here how the delete button click handler is in a much better position to handle the error than the previous example because this lives in the ui layer where we need to uh, present the user with with information about the deletion failure. And the reason why we can pull this off now is because delete cat doesn't swallow uh, the error from the database deletion inside of itself. Uh, it returns the uh, the promise so that it can propagate up to the uh, to the UI. This is a very simplified example. Uh, this is just one layer in a real software. You would have. Uh, multiple layers of this where that just kept returning promises, but it's really the exact same principle. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you are not able to gra totally gracefully handle the error uh, that happens inside your function, you should let that uh, error propagate up to the higher level, the calling uh, calling code, so that that code can uh, deal deal with it if it 
if it likes, or do crash reporting if it's at the top level. Don't do crash reporting inside of functions. Let promises propagate up and let the top level code deal with crash reporting. I want to make a shout out because this episode was kind of like the brainchild of my uh, ex-colleague Felipe at, uh, at Spotify. I've linked his uh, Twitter handle in the episode description. Uh, you should follow him because he has a lot of interesting thoughts like this. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning 0800 GMT. If you don't want to wait until next Monday morning, you can check out this episode right now that robots have selected for your viewing pleasure. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay tuned.